Just past the Alberta border lies the Crow's Nest Pass and Frank, a village with less than 200 inhabitants, but a fascinating history. It's the turn of the 20th century. Frank's a bustling coal town with a population of about 600 people. Turtle Mountain towers over the busy town, the coal seam within providing a livelihood to many of Frank's residents. The indigenous Blackfoot and Kootenai peoples knew Turtle Mountain as the mountain that moves and refused to camp underneath it. The inhabitants of Frank would come to realize the truth in those oral traditions. In April 1903, an unusually warm spring followed a particularly wet winter. The spring melt is underway in the pass until a cold snap on April 28th refroze much of the melt, some of which seeped into Turtle Mountain's many fissures. This would spell disaster for the town of Frank. At 4.10 in the morning of April 29th, most of Frank's residents were asleep in their homes when the south peak of Turtle Mountain cleaved. Roughly 110 million metric tons of limestone raced down the mountain across the Crow's Nest Pass and up the other side of the valley. In the path of this slide was the eastern portion of Frank. Moving more like a dense, fast-flowing liquid than a solid, at speeds up to 120 kilometers an hour, the flow buried three square kilometers in rubble. The landslide lasted only about 100 seconds, but in that time, it killed more than 90 people and destroyed, among other things, the Frank Cemetery, a construction camp, seven miners' cottages, two kilometers of railway, and all of the surface buildings of the Canadian American Coal and Coke Company. This makes Frank Slide the deadliest landslide in Canadian history. Those nearby who heard the event compared the sound to steam escaping under high pressure. It was so loud that it could be heard four kilometers with some as far as the town of Cochrane claiming they heard the noise, over 200 kilometers away. There's a myth that the sole survivor was a single baby girl nicknamed Frankie Slide, but it's just that, a myth. The majority of the town's residents and buildings were left unscathed. 17 miners were trapped within Frank Mine on Turtle Mountain following the event, but dug their way to freedom 13 hours after the slide. Another 23 people at the southeastern edge of town survived as well, including three young girls. In the wake of the slide, 12 bodies were pulled from the rubble. However, due to how deep these rocks were, 45 meters in some areas, the majority of the bodies were never recovered and remain unaccounted for. Though six more bodies would be recovered in 1922 during construction. But life in Frank continued. While some left the town after the slide, many stayed. The mine was reopened a few weeks later and the buried section of the railway was rebuilt. By 1910, the population of Frank had grown to 1,000 people. Then in 1911, a royal commission of scientists found that Turtle Mountain was structurally unstable and that the town of Frank was still in danger. Over several years, the buildings from Old Frank were dismantled or relocated, and New Frank was established across the Canadian Pacific Railway tracks, where it remains today. So what caused the collapse of Turtle Mountain? The coal mine which was opened in 1900 was blamed immediately following the landslide. However, scientists have since determined that mining was only a contributing factor in the event. The primary cause of Frank Slide was not human intervention, but the unstable geological structure of Turtle Mountain itself. This also aligns with the indigenous traditional knowledge which acknowledged the mountain that moves before mining began. Here are the factors that contributed to the slide. 
During the formation of the Rocky Mountains, powerful forces folded the once horizontal layers of sedimentary rock that make up Turtle Mountain until they lay nearly vertical. This makes for a very unstable mountain, as the boundaries between rock layers or contacts can create weak points where the layers can sever. A major thrust fault runs through the mountain as well. The Turtle Mountain Thrust Fault cuts through the mountain. Formed when older rock layers were forced above younger rocks, this thrust fault further divides and weakens the rock layers making up the mountain. Additionally, surface cracks and deep fissures allowed water to seep deep within Turtle Mountain. Rain and meltwater eroded away the layers of shale, sandstone, and limestone. The freezing and thawing of the water continued to widen and weaken these cracks in the mountain. It was only a matter of time before Turtle Mountain came tumbling down, and the conditions leading up to the slide on April 29th, 1903 were the final piece in this recipe for disaster. The winter of 1902 and 1903 was marked by more snow than normal. An unusually warm spring followed, and snowmelt and rain seeped into the mountain. The cold snap that came on April 28th then froze the water that had made its way into the mountain, expanding in fissures and pushing the rock layers past their breaking point. Now the question is, will the mountain move again? It actually still is. Every year, Turtle Mountain moves a few millimeters. Scientists have determined that the north peak of Turtle Mountain isn't likely to produce a large rock slide. However, large cracks on the south and third peak suggest that these sections could be a source for another large rock slide in the future. Monitoring equipment provides a continuous stream of data on the slow-moving mountain, and scientists from the Alberta Geological Survey keep an eye on things. With the current rate of movement, a major rock slide isn't likely to occur soon. Though, if the mountain's movement speeds up or there's an earthquake nearby, the mountain may be rocking and rolling sooner than expected. Thankfully, another rock slide, even if it does happen, isn't likely to cause the devastation of Frank Slide. Even if all of the major zones of instability were to give way at once, the slide would only be about a sixth the size of the original Frank Slide, and would most likely fall on the eastern edge of the old slide, away from the crow's nest's inhabitants. That's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, consider giving this video a like and a comment, it really helps me out. And if you're interested in history, both human and natural, consider subscribing to The Yellow Bird for more content like this. Thanks so much for watching and have a lovely day. Bye bye!